There are tremendous obstacles to a manned mission to Mars. Because some of these can be solved by just throwing money at the problem, but others are far more intractable. However, there may be a way to get a manned mission on Mars. That solution may pose too much of an ethical nightmare to be considered a viable option. Now, in order to see if this ethical dilemma is even worth addressing, let's first look at the obstacles that face a manned mission to Mars. The first thing is that in order to send people to Mars, you need to supply the vehicle that they're travelling in with the necessary equipment to sustain life. This includes things like food, water, oxygen and power. And whilst water can be recycled, some weight saving measures taken with some of the other requirements, it does mean that a huge proportion of the mass of the craft to Mars will be taken up with supplies. Of course, the longer the mission, the more supplies that will be required for the journey. One possible way to reduce the need for supplies is to actually increase the speed of the spacecraft, which would, by extension, reduce the journey time and reduce the weight of supplies. But this would also come with its own problems. Now, this additional mass for a Mars mission needs, of course, to be taken from Earth into orbit. The more mass you're putting into orbit, the larger rocket you need to actually get it there. So, to assemble an orbit of possible 60 or so tons might be needed in a manned mission. The most viable solution is going to be to have multiple launches and then assemble the vehicle and its cargo whilst actually in orbit. This course would increase the expense of the mission, but it doesn't really put any technological barriers to the mission, just severe financial barriers. However, still more problems for the humans who are undergoing the journey than just surviving the trip. A relatively minor problem would be the social interactions on board the ship itself. Being able to cope with other people in a cramped environment for months on end would probably take very careful selection, and whilst some problems may occur, relatively unavoidable. However, surviving other people is nothing compared to surviving outside the protective envelope of our atmosphere and its magnetic shield. Sheathing of the craft during transit between planets from just normal radiation from the sun would be difficult. And additional shielding of course means additional weight. The design may be able to make use of stored water as protection from most of the radiation, but it's unlikely enough to protect it from the massive output from the sun's occasional solar flares or coronal mass ejections. And they run the additional risk with galactic cosmic rays being limited from other stars in the Milky Way. Now, they may be able to make use of new materials like hydrogenated boron nitride nanotubes and advances in the prediction of solar weather patterns, but there's going to be considerable risk with each extra day they spend in space. And this is going to the issue of speed and the time the journey to the Mars will take. As we've seen, there are considerable advantages in travelling between Earth and Mars as quickly as possible. And whilst this additional speed will require an additional thrust, other than the cost, this doesn't actually create much of a problem at the Earth end. However, it does create rather a substantial problem at the Mars end of the journey. Mars has a very thin atmosphere, which means that using parachutes or other devices to actually slow the descent of the craft results in them being far less effective than they've been on Earth at reducing the velocity of an incoming spacecraft. In order to slow the descent, you need far larger parachutes or more elaborate methods of slowing the craft down. The other problem with attempting to slow the craft down is that actually increasing the mass of the craft exponentially increases the measures required to slow the craft down. When you get up to the mass of the manned craft, it becomes very difficult to significantly slow the craft down. And even if you detach some of the craft before attempting a landing, the extremely high velocity of the craft as it enters the atmosphere means it's going to be virtually impossible to slow the craft down enough to ensure a safe landing for those on board. So what then is the alternative that may make a Mars mission possible? Well, to understand that, we must first address what the really desired parameters of a mission to Mars, as I phrased it at the beginning. What we really need is actually a manned mission on Mars, not a manned mission to Mars. Humans are not required for a successful journey between the two planets. And taking measures to ensure that they survive the journey to Mars virtually dooms the mission 
once it gets to Mars. We have a mission that doesn't require humans to be on board the craft. It's relatively easy to achieve a successful mission to Mars, deliver a moderate payload of equipment at the other end. The mass of this payload can be increased by using items like an ion drive to move the craft between Earth and Mars. This gives a slow, steady acceleration and can be turned around halfway through the mission to slow the craft down well before it enters the atmosphere of Mars. This course will remain much, much longer the journey time, but without passengers, the requirement is no longer a critical factor. Now, one or more of the craft will then land on the surface of Mars and create a habitat that would make surviving on the surface possible. Now, it isn't possible to terraform Mars, but it certainly is possible, though difficult, to create a viable habitat for humans to survive in. We could land have a mini factory with small robots on Mars which would gather resources from the surface to replicate themselves and then to create the initial habitat, extending it over time and carrying out repairs and maintenance to the habitat ready for human habitation. However, given the earlier problems that I mentioned, how can we get humans to the surface of Mars? There is a possibility, this is where the ethical dilemma comes in. Sending full-grown humans to Mars doesn't seem to be a viable option. We do have the possibility to send material which has the potential to become a fully grown human. The nature of this material means that delivering it safely to the surface of Mars would be relatively easy. Additionally, maintaining and protecting the biological material whilst in space would be relatively easy to do due to small size, mass, and specialty storage needs. Now, once on the surface of Mars, this biological material could be implanted into an artificial womb and grown into a baby. This uncle child would have only known the habitat on Mars probably actually be better able to adapt to the confined environment than would an experienced adult astronaut as that environment would be all the child had ever known. There might however be substantial psychological problems growing up without physical human contact. This could be minimised by constant monitoring and interactions from Earth. The time delay could cause some problems though. Some of these issues though could be reduced by using an artificial intelligent program for instant communication on a limited number of topics. So this solution then would provide a manned mission on Mars that does bring with it a whole host of moral and ethical problems by carrying out the mission in this manner.